Banka Baroda Betak to this session, which is supported by the JCB Prize for Literature series. Just to announce before we start that Roshin Ali, Arunavana Sinha, Hansda Sovendra Shekhar will all be signing their books in the book signing tent after the session, which is out of the building around to the left near the Mughal tent. So, Please join me in welcoming to the stage for this session, negotiating the male space in contemporary fiction, Roshan Ali, Aronava Sinha, Peramal Murugan, Hansa Savendra Shekhar, in conversation with Manasi Subramaniam. Hello. Hello, and welcome to Negotiating the Male Space in Contemporary Fiction. There are not many circumstances in which I would be happy with a manual, but if we're going to be discussing masculinity, I am very happy to be given the opportunity to put them on the spot. So, before we begin, uh, I want to kind of get a very quick response from each of you on two sort of thesis statements. Number one is, can we assume that in this world, being male is in itself a privilege? Ah, yes, yes. Savendra says yes. 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 Murugan? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Statement one has been accepted. I'm going somewhere with this. Statement number two. Can we assume that privilege is a result of and results in always oppression? Yes. Yes. Uh, privilege and oppression. Well, answers are so strong, this is falling down. <laughs> Roshan? Okay. Yes? Okay. Okay. So, that's, that, that was easy. Uh, men are privileged. Privilege is the result of oppression. Privilege results in oppression. From there, let's start talking about the responsibilities that come with privilege. Uh, step one for privilege has always been acknowledgement. But where do you go from there? You're all writers, uh, all four of you are writers, all four of you have platforms in which you have been able to express yourselves. But with great power comes great responsibility. What is the responsibility of an individual once one has acknowledged one's privilege? Where does one go from there? How do you use your privilege in, um, in an effective way, but at the same time in a constantly respectful, constantly sensitive, constantly sympathetic way? What are the ways in which male writers can... I, I, don't, just, I, don't, want to say, I don't want to make it seem like male writers can help the, the way in which masculinity is perceived, but maybe what we can do is male writers can help the way in which their masculinity, their own personal masculinity is perceived. So starting from there, Murugan, uh, we know that uh, when you were censored, uh, after uh, uh, the writing of Madhuru Bhagan, One Part Woman, uh, a lot of rage stemmed from the portrayal of the character Punna. And as a, as a free sexual agent, as a woman with, uh, with such a sort of powerful way of expressing personal intimacy, and it was that that inspired a lot of rage. And was it because it is a woman that you were writing about? Had it been a man, would that have been different? Uh, and why is it that women inspire rage in a way that men don't? The Pudua and the Puna character on the Avala Vedipu and the Kurumpa Mukimana Karna on a society and allow could you values now be in a great. In the value system, the Kapata Kudi or Purupe. நம்ம சமூகம் வந்து பெண்கள் கிட்ட தான் கொடுத்துருக்குது அதனால அது ஆண்களுக்கு அவ்வளவு அதுல பொறுப்பு கிடையாது அப்படிங்கறத சமூகத்துடைய பிராக்டிகலா அந்த நடைமுறை வந்து அப்படி தான் நினைக்கிறேன் அதனால அந்த வேல்யூ சிஸ்டத்தை வந்து ஒரு பெண் காபாத்தி வச்சிட்டே இருக்கணும் அத உடச்சா சமூகத்துல பெரிய மாற்றங்கள் வந்துரும் அப்படிங்கறதனால தான் சமூகம் அதை எதிர்பா அந்த அடிப்படையில் தான் அந்த கேரக்டருக்கு அவ்வளவு பெரிய எதிர்ப்பு வந்ததுன்னு வந்தது முக்கியமாக அந்த நாவலுக்கு எதிர்ப்பு வந்ததில் அந்த காலி கடைசியில் சூசைட் பண்ணிக்கிறானா இல்லையான்னு ஒரு இதில் முடியும் அதுக்கு எல்லோரும் பெரும்பாலும் ஆண்கள் அது கேட்டது என்ன அப்படின்னு சொன்னால் அவன் எதற்காக சாகணும் பொண்ணாக தானே சாகணும் அவள் தான் தப்பு பண்ணா அப்படின்னே கேட்டாங்க 
அந்த மாதிரி அதை வந்து ஒரு பெண்ணுடைய விஷயத்தை வந்து அவளுடைய சுதந்திரம் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு எடுத்துக்கிற அந்த பார்வை கிடையாது அது காரணம் அந்த வேல்யூ சிஸ்டம்ங்கிறத நான் நினைக்கிறேன் ஸோ ஹி சேஸ் தட் எஸ் தெர் வாஸ் அ லாட் ஆஃப் ரேஜ் தட் கேம் அட் த கேரக்டர் ஆஃப் பொன்னா அண்ட் தேட் இஸ் பிகாஸ் அவர் வேல்யூ சிஸ்டம் இஸ் கம்ப்ளீட்லி ப்ரோக்கன் அண்ட் தென் ஹி சேஸ் தட் the the only people who can truly restore our value system to change the way in which we perceive this is women as a man there's not much i can do because women have power and responsibility and they are the the ones with the true capacity to change the world he also says that uh, one part woman ends with the question of whether or not kali kills himself and one of the questions that he was frequently asked was why should Ka- kali is the male why should kali kill himself Ponna is the problem character she is the one who has to kill herself and he says that he didn't understand why he was being asked this question and why it is that the very idea of uh, sudandiram or independence for women causes so much rage in the reader uh, from murugan i think we, i want to talk to you savendra and again once again on the subject of censorship uh you too have experienced censorship in a certain way and uh i have heard i don't know if it is true but i have heard it said that you are amongst the first and the few uh, santali writers to have been published in english in the mainstream indian publishing industry and so there is a kind of marginalization that exists in that as well uh you are there is a, you are already a part of a minority but then again you are part of a majority so it is it is i'm curious to know how these two things um privilege and oppression exist within you as a writer and how do you negotiate that in your own writing because i think you have to be on both ends of the card um uh, this is i think a question which i had also faced uh, in my previous uh, panel uh, which was on uh, 24th that is the diversity panel being various so i was asked um about you know inclusion and diversity in my uh, own writings so my answer was that was it a legit question to even ask me about you know including uh, about inclusion and diversity in my own works when i myself come from a marginalized space and what i write mostly about is you know the marginalized people and uh, those places i haven't been you know out of uh, jharkhand i cannot write for you know like uh, places outside jharkhand i have to write about the places and people that i see and i see oppression i write about it and uh, i cannot really say how i am going to tackle this you know the <coughs> the oppression through my writings but maybe by writing more and writing what i see and writing what i feel about i can do this perhaps so uh, from there i have to ask had you been a woman uh would you do you think the backlash against you would have been harsher different what do you think that might have been yes had i been a woman the backlash against me would have been more you know harsher right yeah. so i i mean i guess that's what i mean when i say there is a male privilege and there is a sort of male prerogative to being uh i will add something to this here yeah uh i am a male i was you know Uh, opposed for what i wrote so the question that i was asked is when people opposing me it was like why he wrote this and not why he writes at all had i been a woman i think the question that would have come to me first was why does she write at all absolutely yeah. that, and thank you for so much for saying that thank you uh arunava you are a translator uh, you are also a literary critic and wear so many other hats but as a translator I have read work by you which is translation of women writers and I have read work by you which is translations of male writers and one of the things that I that I know about your work and is so integral to the process of translation is a kind of fluidity that you occupy entirely the voice of the writer that you are translating that you don't bring your voice into it so when you translate uh, uh, I, I mean writers with different Uh, writing styles different speech styles different sentence structures and so on i can see that so clearly in the way you occupy the space and bring it to us in english but tell me how it feels to um be that person where uh, when we have recently worked together on sangeeta bandyopadhyay's wonderful novel we are working together on uh, several other writers as well tell me what is the difference between 
translation of a female writer and translation of a male writer. And I think, I think there is a, you must also address the fact that you are a man when you answer. Yes. So first, it's, a, it's really an honor to be able to translate women writers uh, being a man. And it's not something that I take for granted. Um, in fact, I, I think that um, I've just been lucky. That's all there is to it. I have no particular claim to being the person who should be translating women writers. Um, now, um, it's been a very, very um, disturbing, in a good way, a fantastically disturbing experience to translate women writers. And I'm thinking specifically of three writers here. Sangeeta, of course, Sangeeta Bandapadha. I'm thinking of Bani Basu. And I'm thinking of a novel I've just finished translating by Taslima Nasreen. Now, there are two reasons for this. Um, one is that when you are reading for translation, you're reading a text very, very closely. You're not just reading it as a reader from your own space. So if you're a man reading a book written by a woman, then you, you, let's face it, you are reading it defensively, or if you're the kind of person who thinks that feminism has gone too far, and there are far too many men who think that, though they will not admit it, then you are reading it uh, from an aggressive position to try and prove it's wrong, this is not right, yeah? But when you're reading uh, so closely as a translator, so two, I have two um, sort of discoveries for myself that I want to share. One is that men are really not very important in the lives of women. Men give themselves, yeah. They, they accord themselves far more importance than they actually have. And when you listen to women talking to one another in particular, as they do in literature, it's, it's a shock. <laughs> That's one. Um, the second thing is that you also realize what women think of men. So there are these whole spaces where men don't even figure. And then you realize what women think of men. And then you understand that as men, and you know, this is a sort of DNA burden, I think, that all men have to own up to. Uh, even if you have not personally done anything, you cannot wish away your biological uh, genetic history. So we are complicit, like it or not. And you realize that by every act, all, many of them unconsciously, men have just pushed women to stay within certain spaces. Mm. And uh, the way men depict men who supposedly are allies of the feminist movement is very heroic. So there are all these heroic men who are doing these things. But the way women depict such men is fantastic because they say that you, you just didn't have a choice, you know? <laughs> so you did it, but don't consider yourself a, a great person for that reason. So, you know, and, and do I have time for one more? Yeah. So, and sometimes, you know, many of these uh, realizations are almost counterintuitive in ex interesting ways. For example, in Taslima Nasreen's, the novel that um, earned her a lot of fame and infamy, uh, Lodja, Shame, um, uh, just quick background, that novel is set in Bangladesh. It is what happened after the destruction of the Babri Masjid in India, when there was a backlash on some Hindus in Bangladesh who were then attacked by lo the local population. And then um, a woman, the, the protagonist's sister was raped, and then as a sort of revenge, the protagonist decided to rape a local woman. Then this new novel, which is a sequel to it, in this rape, again, plays a very strong role. And there is this protagonist, again, who has now fantasized, or maybe it's real, we are not sure, that he has been part of another rape incident. And then the woman who is the, the victim or his fantasized victim at one point tells the author that they think it's a big deal. Actually, I don't care because I am married, my husband does not love me, and I have been raped every single night of my marriage. So for me, another act of rape by a bunch of men is actually qualitatively no different from what I go through every night. And you can imagine what it is like to read that, to translate those words, to actually be writing those words yourself on, on behalf of the person who... I'm, I'm getting goose pimples right now even as I talk. So, you know, this, this kind of... My world has changed, I can say that for sure. Yeah. Uh, Roshan, let's talk about Ib. Ib Roshan has written a novel called Ib's Endless Search for Satisfaction, uh, which I love. I have been an early champion of it. 
but that, of course, does not mean I'm going to let you off the hook. Uh, Ib is, the title character of your novel, Ib, is, uh, he's interesting, he has a very unique voice, and the, I mean, the, I think the most striking thing about your book is the voice, the character. And from that, I have to, I think we have to talk a little bit about the idea of likability. I think that um, there is an onus on women characters, on female character, on writing female characters who are likable that does not exist when it comes to the writing of male characters. That is one, one thing about likability. But the other thing is also that the same thing which you might look at as a very attractive characteristic in a man comes across as a very unattractive characteristic in a woman. So the question of likability is actually even takes a backseat because we perceive men and women so differently. Uh, tell us a little bit about the writing of Abe, the responses you have had, and how much of that is a result of your, not yours, but your character's male privilege. Um, okay, honestly, how do I say this? I don't think much, I have never thought much about these issues. Um, and when I wrote the book, I, it didn't come, as you said, um, as somebody else told me, uh, Rhea, Rhea Mukherjee, she's in the audience today, but she read my book one day and she said, uh, there's a lot about masculinity in the book. Uh, and that was the first I'd heard of it. So when I wrote it, I, nothing of the sort was uh, running in my head. Um, so this is a little difficult topic for me because I, have, I haven't engaged much with it and um, I hope that doesn't make me a, a sexist or a male no, oppressor. But or Roshan, Roshan, you haven't engaged much with it, but you have to engage with it, like now. Yeah, I, ha I haven't, I haven't, yeah, I haven't yet. Um, so, uh, and so your likability question, uh, is, uh, is, li is he a likable character? Uh, do you think he's a likable character? I think so. Okay, because I've heard from many people that he's not a very likable character, and that, that actually is his appeal, that he's not likable. But that, the fact that it is his appeal is the great male prerogative, that unlikable characters are appealing for men in a way yeah. that they are not for women. I, I don't know. I honestly don't know the answer to that. Whether, I mean, if the character was a woman, I don't know whether she'd be less likable. I, I don't know. Okay, but tell me as a reader, how do, you, how do you feel about women, right, women characters that are not necessarily likable and therefore frustrate you far more than unlikable male characters? I never felt like that. I never feel like that. <laughs> okay. I don't. I, no. Honestly, I don't. I, I, love, I love characters based on their characteristics and what kind of characters, their voice, basically their voice. And... Um, Personally, it doesn't really make a difference to me whether it's a, uh, it's a woman character or a male character. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't think, I mean, I think that is not the world we live in. I think that uh, what literature and criticism and pure data has shown us that, that uh, readers think very, very differently. So let me rephrase a little bit. I want to go to a word that you just used, which is masculinity. And there is no way we can talk about masculinity without addressing toxic masculinity. And from there, I want to ask all of you, everyone here, how much have men, male writers engaged with the issue of toxic masculinity? Uh, how, much have, how much has Me Too affected male writers? Have they, have they started thinking about these issues in, in, their, in their work? Should they? Can they? How must they? Uh, is the, are men doing enough, guys? Like, that's basically what I'm trying to uh, ask of all of you. Savindra, why don't you start, uh, start yeah, us off? Yeah, my JSB Price shortlisted novel, My Father's Garden, is full of toxic masculinity. Uh, what else should I say? <laughs> and the narrator, he's completely okay with that toxic masculinity, and he, you know, plays along, or what sort of satisfaction the narrator gets, I have no idea. <laughs> So, am I even the right person to answer this question? I can't say. Okay, I mean, I can just talk about examples from books I've translated or I'm contemplating translating. Um, so, there's this 
what I find very interesting, especially when women write toxic masculinity, is that they don't always locate it in an overtly masculine space, but the toxicity is very evident. So I'm thinking of this one story where a woman has a husband who is very, very ill. He, but he's whining all the time. 24-7 he whines. And he expects his wife to wait on him hand and foot she has no life. She is not entitled to a life or existence of her own. Her only purpose on earth is to be by his side and, you know, minister to his every ridiculous need. However much you may sympathize with him for being sick, he has no business making demands on her 24-7. So you know what she wants to do? She wants to kill him. She has these thoughts constantly of giving him an overdose of medicines and adding some poison to it so that she can kill him. And she takes her fantasy to a point where she's almost convinced that it's happened. I found that fantastic because as a reader, I was rooting for it. I said, kill him, kill him, kill him. <laughs> you know, can't take this guy anymore. And then you realize that toxicity actually exists as, as not just as blatant displays of of masculinity and machismo, but also in, in every single thing that men do. You know, it's, it's just so I, me, mine, and you know, only after all my needs are met, I can, if you have time left over or, or mind space left over, you can do your stuff. So, yeah, and our men, I mean, I don't know, I don't think men are, uh, very many men are even aware of that. When they present unlikable men, and, and, and I'm not talking about your book, which is very different, but when they present unlikable men, especially with relation to women, then it's always in a particular frame, you know, so one man is unlikable because other men dislike him. Right? So he is a bad species of manhood. He's not a bad species of uh, example of humanity. And women don't like him because he is not going to be a good uh, romantic partner or he is not going, you know, certain very specific flaws which men think are what women are, uh, are bothered about. Yeah. So there is no attempt, very little attempt by men to understand what toxic masculinity is when seen by a woman. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's the same thing. I understand you women. I can show you what toxic masculinity is. But they're always framing it on their own terms. Yeah. Not on anybody yeah. else's. Hey, um, I think there is a space for women voices in the space in the past. There is a space for women voices in the past. ஆனால் அது வெளியில் வரும்போது எப்போ இங்கே என்ன மாதிரியான ஒரு நம்ம சொசைட்டியில் ஒரு இதுனா ஒரு பிரச்சனைனா அந்த பிரச்சனை யாருக்கோ அவங்க தான் அதை பற்றி பேசணும் அப்படிங்கிற மாதிரியான ஒரு எண்ணம் இருக்குது தலித்து பிரச்சனை அப்படின்னு சொன்னால் தலித்துகள் தான் பேசணும் பெண்கள் பிரச்சனைனா பெண்கள் தான் பேசணும் விவசாயிகள் பிரச்சனைனா விவசாயிகள் தான் பேசணும் அப்படிங்கிற மாதிரியான ஒன்று இருக்குது எப்போதும் அந்த பிரச்சனை சம்மந்தப்பட்டவங்க மட்டும் பேசுனா போதாது அவங்க பேசணும் தான் அவங்க மட்டும் பேசுனா போதாது மற்றவர்களும் அந்த பிரச்சனையை பற்றி பேசணும் அந்த பிரச்சனையில் வந்து வேறு வியூஸ் கூட இருக்கலாம் அதை பற்றி தப்பு கிடையாது வேறு வியூஸ் இருந்தால் கூட அதை வெளிப்படுத்த வேண்டியது அவசியம் அதனால் ஒரு பிரிவுக்குரிய பிரச்சனையை இன்னொரு பிரிவை சேர்ந்தவர்கள் பல தளத்தில் இருக்கக்கூடியவர்களும் பேச வேண்டியது அவசியம்னு நினைக்கிறேன் அதுபோல தான் பெண்கள் பிரச்சனை பெண்கள் மட்டும் பேசணும்னு இல்லை ஆண்களும் அதை பற்றி பேசணும் எழுதணும் அப்படிங்கிறது தான் என்னுடைய அபிப்பிராயம் ஸோ முருகன் சேஸ் தட் இன் மோஸ்ட் கேசஸ் it is very in, in almost all cases it is very important that the voice of the oppressed is the first voice that gets that comes out so dalits should be writing about the, about dalit issues women should be writing about women's issues uh, that is how that is how the first voice comes out but the job does not end there every other person has a responsibility as well and that responsibility is to amplify and to also chime in and without these two things happening simultaneously we will never hear enough about the issues that are part of our lives uh, but eppadi engage pannadhu men idu patti engage pannadhu matha eppadi engage pannam pannapadi eppadi eludumbodhu indha problem patti am writing vandu poduva vandu adu vandu oru koodu vittu koodu paayira vithai pola dhaan adu ஒரு ரைட்டர் ப பல கேரக்டர்களை உருவாக்குறாங்க அப்படி உருவாக்கும்போது எந்த கேரக்டர் எழுதுனாலும் அந்த கேரக்டரை கோ கோணத்திலிருந்து சிந்திப்பது தான் எழுத்து அதுக்கு அந்த அந்த பயிற்சி ரொம்ப இருந்தால் தான் எழுத்து வரும் ஒரு கேரக்டர் பக்கம் சார்ந்து வந்து ஒரு ரைட்டர் இருக்க முடியாது 
அது இன்னொரு கேரக்டர் வேற ஒரு கேரக்டர் தனக்கு சம்மந்தம் இல்லாத ஒன்று எழுதும் போது கூட அந்த கேரக்டராக மாறி அந்த கேரக்டருடைய கோணத்திலிருந்து யோசித்து எழுதுறது தான் எழுத்து இப்போ எனக்கு அந்த மாதிரியான அது அதுக்கு முயற்சி பண்ணணுங்கிறது தான் நான் நிறைய அந்த மாதிரியான முயற்சிகள் பண்ணுவேன் இப்போ வந்து ஒன் பார்ட் டூ மண்ணில் பொண்ணானா பொண்ணாவுடைய கோணத்திலிருந்து அவன் இந்த இடத்துல எப்படி யோசிப்பா எப்படி சிந்திப்பா அப்படிங்கிறது அந்த அந்த கோணத்திலிருந்து யோசிக்க வேண்டியது அவசியம் அது ரொம்ப கஷ்டந்தான் அது உடனே வந்துடாது ஆனால் அது அந்த மாதிரி யோசிக்க வேண்டியது அவசியம் அதுதான் உண்மையான ரைட்டிங்னு நினைக்கிறேன் ஸோ ஹீஸ் டாக்கிங் அபவுட் எம்பத்தி அண்ட் பெர்ஸ்பெக்டிவ் எஸ் வெல் ஸோ ஹவு டஸ் அ மேன் எங்கேஜ் வித் த வாய்ஸ் ஆஃப் உமன் ஆர் த ட்ரபிள்ஸ் ஆஃப் அ உமன் தி ஒன்லி வே டு டூ இட் இஸ் டு இஸ் டு எம்பத்தைஸ் அண்ட் டூ லுக் இட் இட் ஃப்ரம் தியர் பெர்ஸ்பெக்டிவ் அண்ட் ஸோ வென் ஹி ரைட்ஸ் அபவுட் பொன்னா ஹூ இஸ் த லீட் கேரக்டர் இன் ஒன் பார்ட் உமன் ஹி ட்ரைஸ் வெரி ஹார்ட் டு புட் ஹிம் செல்ஃப் இன் ஹர் ஷூஸ் பி ஹர் அண்ட் திங்க் அஸ் ஹர் அண்ட் தட் இஸ் அ ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் எம்பத்தி அண்ட் விதவுட் தேட் யூ கேன் நெவர் ரியலி get into the head of any character and be able to tell a story fully he also adds that i try to do this very hard i and it is very hard it is a very very difficult thing to do but that does not mean you should stop trying you should keep at it so uh the the question of dealing with toxicity is uh is i mean yes it is it is the male responsibility to do so and there are ways to do it and of course we don't get it right the first time but we keep trying and we keep trying and we keep trying but i want to talk specifically about me too uh how have men dealt with the specific issue we work in the media, uh, in the areas of media and publishing and writing how are men dealing with the uh with the sort of revolution that has been taking place in this country as well as in others and how has me too impacted male writers uh roshan do you want to come in on that um clearly i haven't dealt much with it um but uh the, i mean obviously we should uh, i'm that's not to say that we shouldn't be dealing with it and uh me too was it it raised awareness in people that uh weren't aware of it and it was so powerful some of the i mean i found out that some of my friends um actually went on social media and were part of that movement and till then i had no idea that they were actually the they were survivors yeah uh so that was really uh, really a shocking uh shocking part of the whole me too thing and for somebody like me who clearly doesn't think much about uh gender and um uh gender politics identity it was it was a real wake up call uh but uh the question of whether writers should engage with it or should not engage with it i don't think that anybody can um tell a writer what he should or she should engage with or not engage with so i'm just going to uh just say it straight out that i don't think writer should engage with uh anything i mean nobody can tell a writer what to engage with and for me writing comes out of a very subconscious uh place um i'm not even conscious half the time of what uh w- the kind of topics and things that i write about uh, and to say that i should engage with a certain uh political or uh a topic any kind of topic i i don't think that's valid for me that's fair yeah uh but is have men done enough i guess not <laughs> yeah i guess not um judging by the by the the kind of uh, applause that the kind of <laughs> applause that the kind of comments have here have uh, have got i am guessing that men haven't done enough and they should do more okay yeah uh what what can we do about that anyone savendra arunava what can we do about this um, do you mean do outside of writing or no no i mean very much within the space of writing within the space of writing well yeah okay so um, speaking as um i think it's not seeped in enough into people's minds to be able to produce literature from it yet it's still it's a, it's a top of the mind reaction at this point um it's been written about in the west we've had got some well known books disgrace for example 
uh, there have been movies, plays, and disgrace is particularly interesting. And when the Me Too um, thing broke, I actually taught disgrace. I mean, I made my class uh, read Disgrace and listen to their uh, response. Their response was very interesting. After, and Disgrace is set in a, on a university campus where a professor has a wildly inappropriate relationship with a student and forces her into it and gaslights her into believing that she did it out of choice. Um, the response of my students was very interesting. They wanted to make presentations on a new code of conduct for professors on university campuses yeah. on how to how to work with students and the one thing that they kept saying which i thought was really spot on they said that you can you can um, think that something is consent but it is not if a 19 year old student supposedly consents to a relationship with a 40-year-old professor, it is not consent. Even if the student is saying yes every step of the way, it is not consent because they are not equals. The professor holds enormous power over the student's future, and it is a very natural thing for a student to sometimes be awed by the erudition of a, of a college professor. And indeed, the erudition or the power that anybody higher up in their worldview possesses, and sometimes that can be confused for consent. So that, that I thought was an, a very interesting theme that perhaps can be pursued uh, to greater detail, and I think it will be. Yeah. I think it will be. Yeah. Uh, See, I'm not from publishing. I'm still, I think I st I'm still an outsider. But this Me Too movement should be everywhere, in all fields, yeah. all over, in all offices. That is the first thing. Second. We are questioning people who are the perpetrators. Yeah. Are we even questioning the people who are supporting those perpetrators, giving them a platform or something? Yeah. OK, I come from, I am a government employee. We have our own majburis, OK? Those people, they may be our seniors, so we cannot deny them their right to be on a certain platform. But apart from these, the several platforms that we have here, why are those people who have committed some wrong there, and why are people propping them up, I think? There's a, I mean, what you're raising is an issue which you raised earlier as well, which is complicity. Yeah. How complicit are we in, mm. like, by refusing to speak up, mm. by, by also platforming and pa platforming certain people when we are aware of, uh, when we are aware that we do not support their politics. And, and that is a really, really valuable uh, By actually giving such people a space, we are perpetuating this, you know, this, uh, this, uh, this, patriarchy, this patriarchal thing that we have. You know, the seniors in a particular field, they can get away with anything. So I think yeah, in fact, that there, feeling there are, should there stop. There are two, two examples I'd like to talk about. Um, I'll just not mention the names of the writers in question, to one of whom was accused of inappropriate conduct. Nothing was taken beyond the accusation, but there was shock everywhere because the writer in question was not thought to be someone capable of such things. But you know how it is. No one is thought capable till they're uh, seen to be perfectly capable of it. Um, the other is a writer who has a long, uh, uh, writer and a politician who has a long history of such acts, which have now been brought out in the open. Both their books were published by two separate publishing companies. One, I think, took a public stand saying that we know what has happened, but we are choosing to publish this for certain reasons. The other one is dead silent, but the book is out. The book is out in bookstores. Copies are being sent to media to cover it. The media, the media has very interestingly so far been completely silent and has not and is behaved as though the book does not exist but the fact is why is this publisher in question even bringing out this book you know however important or unimportant it might be so you're right absolutely yeah, and there this, is no attempt to bap tau kind of mindset yeah. first uh, but yeah. are we asking those questions enough in that case are, is the media asking why is the media not asking these questions of the yeah, publishers no, the, or, or even of other media organizations. Yeah, but the media is not asking any of the important questions today. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, so it's, it's very much part of that pattern. You know, whatever makes powerful people uncomfortable, stay away from it. 
Okay, we're definitely not going to like be able to solve world problems by sitting on a panel and talking about it, but tell me what we can do. What can we do to help deplatform writers that, uh, we, that we think of as toxic? What can we do to be less complicit? And like if, if, I, if I said to you... Uh, Even being less complicit is being complicit. I, true. Maybe name to them. To be not complicit. So, maybe name them. Name them and then? And then maybe no invitations to litfests? Right. No, I mean, I'm sure there are people here, even I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> okay. So, okay, should I name them? Yes. Go for it. Okay, sure. The politician in question is MJ Akbar, who has just written a book on in Jinnah and Gandhi, their versions of, of Islam and Hinduism. It's been brought out. Do I need to name the publisher also? Maybe not. That's not necessary. Yeah, thank you. So, <laughs> so there it is. And the other, the other book was a novel written by Kiran Nagarkar. His, he, he died soon afterwards, so I think that story is probably now, uh, you know, you never speak ill of the dead, so that story is silent. But yeah, so that's who they are. Thank you. So, uh, and tell me how you felt about the fact that these questions have not been asked. Like, and is there something we can do? What, like, is there something that we, as individuals, as, who have just acknowledged some very strong crimes, like by saying that uh, uh, toxicity and masculinity and complicity, the, we, that we are all part of a certain kind of culture. We have just acknowledged all of this. What are we going to do now? Um, okay, you want to answer? I just. Are we in the final answer? Okay. Uh, no. Okay. I was just saying maybe we should hope that a meteor comes and falls on our earth so that all of us humans die and so that we can again, you know, take form, and then maybe we can form a more sensible, more equal kind of a world. I, um, unrealistic, but... Unrealistic, yeah. but possible. But I think this, this is the kind of thing we are doing. I mean, this, this is the kind of panel that, um, I guess, helps uh, in, in ways. I mean... Well, I mean, yeah. It, it's helping. I'm sure it's helping somewhere. Is it helping? We should understand all this entitlement and privileges. They make other people feel so small, so useless. Yeah, I mean, I we won't know for a while whether and this as panel long as is you helping. Do not support those no, it's who helping feel me small. for sure. And as long as you do not support those who feel small and useless, I mean, how can we change? I mean, how can we even think of it? Yeah. writing mm. Anna on the or or Vishita Parker the Kana or Visan, Adu and the or Prechana Kuruko. Adumar than on Parker. Ipo the me to wo all the penal summon the pata end the prechani arandalo, as the Samutala Varumboze, or writer kunde, Adu or Visana Kuruk, or Penapati Yeldra Varumboze, as in the in the in the Sayo either Torabano or Parve on the Manasukla Odi Truko. Adu Konjakalangalche, Yapavenala the writing la on the Predipilikla, Aduk or Kalate Namakuruko. Uh writers are not going to be able to so address every problem and solve every problem. So you see a problem in the world, you're not going to be able to pick it up, write about it and solve it. That's just not how writing works. But having said that, uh, when you see something and you, writers, have, writers have a certain kind of vision, yeah. have a certain kind of vision. So when you see something, you engage with it, you deal with it head on. You, and you, uh, what he said earlier, which is that you empathize also. You look at it from multiple uh, multiple perspectives and constantly try and engage with it, and that helps the reader also engage with it in a completely different way. As writers, that is what Murugan says we can do. You were going to say something. Yeah, so I'm going to suggest that we silence the men for some time. <laughs> let, let women <coughs> be heard. <coughs> for the longest time, women's voices have been drowned. It's time for men to shut up and listen and learn. Yeah. And it's not going to happen overnight, so they need to really give some time to listening and learning. And I think the best way that all of you can do this, all of us can do this, is read only women. Okay, never mind who is being published. Read only books written by women. Absolutely. Okay? If I men, disagree. If men, I disagree. Of course. But if men are not hurt for a couple of years, they will change. For sure they will change. I'm sorry, I disagreed. Please buy my book. <laughs> buy it, don't read it. No, okay, that works. I, that works. 
I completely agree with you. Uh, there are publishers in many parts of the world that have taken on this mantle and have said we will only publish women this year. And we have critics who have said we will only review books written by women this year. And there is actually, we spoke about this briefly yesterday. A few years ago, there, as, a, as an experiment, a writer po posted on social media that she had written a novel and had sent a query note uh, with two different names to publishers in various parts of the world. So uh, one name was a male name and the other name was a female name. She got more acceptances to her work as, under the, the same work, the exact same piece of work, under a male name than under a female name. There is something called, and there are more women in publishing right now today in editorial positions than there are men, but in spite of that, that this is happening speaks of something like an unconscious bias. And the way to address any unconscious bias is to address it consciously, like super consciously, in a state of hyper consciousness. So I completely agree with you. One way to do it is to silence the men. Unfortunately, we cannot silence the men on this panel because then you will be stuck with me speaking to you for the next 20 minutes. But what I would like to do uh, is, why, do, why don't we do that? Why don't we, say, why don't we start uh, agreeing on this stage, in this panel, the five of us, to say that we will tell people to try taking pledges like this, that we will try to silence the men a little bit, that we will read more women, that we will engage more proactively with the issues of masculinity and femininity, you, be more conscious about things like the words we are using, the people we are writing, the people we are platforming, and very specifically, I talk about the words we are using. So uh, Murugan and I were briefly discussing uh, this morning that words have a super powerful impact. So uh, in English, when you use words like emasculate, or uh, if when you refer to someone as effeminate, okay. there, have, there are connotations to these words that are very specific to gender, and they are, the, there, are also, there are also value judgments sort of inherent within these words. Murugan, tell me, if, tell me how you feel it is in Tamil, uh, and tell me how you think we can use words more consciously. <laughs> Tamil Purtu Reku on the Manasi Sonamari, the on the Onudae Muli, Abding Gerazi, Tamil and Araya the Kana, Araya Langla, Kanamudio, Rompo Mukiman and Uru Shane Solala, Ipa or Vaisan or Tata Pati Ildanamna, Tata Vandar, Tata Pesinar, Abdin Eldu, Yir Porter than Grade, Maria the Yakuriki Kudi, Tamil. Are they on the or a party pati eleven both the party vandal abing raza? If Papa could appa vandan abine pot elemato. Other the English support of Reco, the Tamil Porto Reco, Anuk Taniana or Vigidi, the Kadesia Mudere, Unde, Penuk Tani Vigidi Unde, Randuberthing Saint, Maria de Kudukra Mariano or Vigidi Unde. Anna Eleven Bode and the Vigidi Pine Pretty, Appa Vandar and Luanga. Jangan kira mana orang naik lelaki kerja, amma bandal abdin kira tu. Amma uk Maria tak dek. Apa amma tu untuk unne singular lelai solra de. Apa tu solom bodo plural lelai solu. Amma tu solom bodo singular lelai solra de. Allah de agri nai lelai solra de. Abdi tu amma bandicce, parti bandicce abdin solra de. Adz tata bandicce nu solra wala ka untuk kerja. Ini Tamil lelai rukudi de. Ippa kunci apa Ippa kansi sa mudi le, inda mari matranggal barano, abdin sulum bode. Panan lamai enu deh naaval le, unde pinardi eldu na naaval le lah. Ippa enu deh amma putaga telu gora, na Tamil le eldu bode enu deh amma unde yir port dana eldi rikan. Amma sunnar, amma sunnal le na nengi me eldi le. Anda kansi sa unde Ippa mudi le unde rikde Tamil le yo anda kansi sa Ippa unde rikde eldu orang gitu. Ellat itu in sula le, ana apadi unde par kunung gara par we Ippa kudi rikde engkara tuun ma. So, this is very interesting uh, that, he, uh, that he mentions this. Now, Tamil, like many other Indian languages, and in fact other languages in many parts of the world as well, has gender for verbs in a way that English doesn't. So you will say he came and she came in the same way in English. But in Tamil, you will use different words. And so there are three different ways, in fact, four different ways of using verbs. So when you say this person came, you can say it in the feminine gender. You can say it in the masculine gender. You can say it in what is known as uh, the respectful verb. So you will say, when you say vandar as opposed to vandan, you say he came respectfully as opposed to he came, full stop. 
and the respectful terminology is used for the male gender and never for the female gender. There is also a verb which is, which is neutral, which you use for uh, objects. That is more often assigned to the women than the respectful gender. And uh, he says that he, in his recent work, Amma, he has very consciously used the respectful gender uh, while referring to his mother. Because, and even though it is not common, like conventional parlance to do so, he has very consciously taken the effort to use the respectful verb and not the female one or the uh, neuter one. A neutral one. Um, uh, Janaki Raman book there. No? Amma Vandal. Huh, so he is talking about a book. Uh, he also spoke about a book called Amma Vandal by Janaki Raman, Amma. who is a, who is a very famous Tamil novelist. And so that that is the the sentence that he th that is used as the title of the book, Amma Vandal, is a disrespectful way of saying this lady came, that, that my mother came. Whereas if it had been about his father, if it had been uh, Appa Vandal, which is my father came, the ver verb would have been the much more respectful one. So he says these are some of the things that he is trying to do in his own work and, is, and that people must start doing when they're speaking to each other as well. Uh, anybody else want to be in? You know about other Bengali, so maybe you can tell us about that as well. Yes, so I'm, I'm just thinking Bengali is uh, inadvertently, I think, very gender neutral. I don't know if it's, if it's a conscious choice or just a grammatical path that it took, because there are no gendered pronouns, there are no gendered verbs either, and sometimes this has been used very effectively by writers to deliberately, you know, to um, un almost unknowingly create uh, gender fluid uh, identities. But I don't think the, it, the, the, um, the impulse was the same. Yeah. It was not to attempt equality, but just take advantage of the language. But I'm just thinking of the fact that earlier, maybe not so much now, but earlier it was conventional for uh, children to address their fathers as, as the equivalent of aap, apni. So it was aap, the respectful one, whereas their mothers were always the familiar right. to me. Right. And uh, while it was sometimes explained away as distance and and intimacy as a function of distance and intimacy, but it was very clearly indicative yeah. of, of power yeah. power lines. Yeah. So, yeah. This apni and tumi difference, it can also mean that apni is someone who is, uh, you know, distant, hence less useful, whereas tumi is someone who is close to you, so more useful. Well, you can exploit more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay, uh, we have about uh, 14 minutes left, so I want to turn over to you guys. Uh, I, can we start giving the mic to women in the room, please? So meanwhile, next time I think you should have a panel of women and men should listen and go away. I mean. And then ask them questions, then we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think there's a lady over there standing, so. Here. Um, I thought the conversation was extremely interesting, very engaging. Thank you so much. Uh, I have one question to all the members on the panel, which is that uh, I think one of the remarks made by uh, the people was that, you know, um, I, there are certain things that one, uh, as a writer, you don't need to engage with, right? Uh, so my question is that isn't the choice to not engage with certain socio-political realities also male privilege? Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe. I'll think about it. I will, I will think about it. Anybody else? But uh, also, uh, look, I, I, um, the kind of writer I am, I'm, I don't know how to say this, but I, I, I don't consciously come up with the things I want to write about. It's a very subconscious process for me, and I find it very difficult to insert um, things that are, don't fascinate me or don't inspire me into my work. And I feel like I am kind of being disingenuous to myself to kind of add a, a thing into, I mean, you're interested in it, and, and other people maybe, and you know, I'm, it's just something that doesn't fascinate me and not to say that I'm a sexist or a misogynist or anything, okay? I, and I don't know if anyone's got that impression, but I'm not. You can ask my wife. 
but uh, I write what, what comes from within, and um, I'm not going to add things into my book because there is a prevailing social climate or, uh, or to, to kind of add to a cause. I'm not that kind of a writer. Uh, so that's just it. So yeah, you, but I think you're right. Men have that choice. Women don't have the choice because they're writing about their lives. Yeah. They have to write about okay. it. Okay. Okay. I don't know. I don't know why, where the microphone is, but I hope it's with another woman. <laughs> I. Literally, I. I can't see where the microphone is. Literally anyone. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very sorry, but I'm going to insist that the mic goes to a woman. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, is it working? Yeah. Um, so, first of all, I just want to say to you that the act of writing is... Uh, I just want to say that the act of writing is very powerful. Your voice is reaching maybe thousands, maybe millions of people. So, I would implore you to just take a more conscious stand when you're putting a word on paper. Um, maybe you will help someone change their thinking, their ideology, or just help someone show a different life that a woman leads or a man leads. Because one of the first concepts that we ever learned is the male gaze. And you have to be very conscious of how you're portraying a woman or any other person in your writing. Because you also have a social uh, history, you have a social standing and everything. And uh, Sorry, I, that went on too long, but I have a question for Anurava. Uh, Anurava. Uh, sorry. Uh, anyway, so uh, translation, uh, do you, first you interact the, with the text as a reader, and then you interact with the text as a writer. Do you feel that you, uh, that you work on your perception of the characters in between, or, do you, or the, is there like a jump in it? Would you mind if we took this question separately? Because sure, sure. I think there are others yeah, on sure. our theme right now. We can talk after that. Uh, why don't we go to uh, one of the ladies at the back? So the question is that. The question is that uh, when uh, we talk about rape and everything, we uh, start taking our uh, women back. We ask them to st uh, stay inside, indoors till late, uh, not go out till late. And we start restricting them. And sometimes like that is a safe option, but sometimes men start doing that in a toxic way. So how do we like, like how do we stop that? I'm not, as I think, as Arunava says, it's not necessarily the job of the writer. Yeah, uh, Mansi, I, I just want no, to say something. No, it's not for a writer. It's just for like. Yeah, it is more of a social thing. question. Yeah. Uh, I think this is more a patriarchal thing. Okay, hai, you smash the patriarchy. I think a lot of things will be solved. <laughs> but let the men stay at home. No, that's much better. Let the women just take over the world. Let the men stay at home. I think it's best for everyone concerned. Okay, there's a lady in front over here. Yeah. Hi. A question for Mr. Perumal, please. On your book, One Part Woman, the rage that you encountered on the writing from the community, on the writing of this book, was it because Pona is a mere woman who dares to challenge her man and go behind his back in a sense, or was it because the community felt that you had maligned the entire community. I actually don't know. I've just finished reading your book, and I thought this was a good chance to ask you. Community 
பெண்கிறது தான் ஃபஸ்ட்டு அந்த அந்த பிரச்சனை வந்தபோது வந்து எனக்கு வந்த எதிர்ப்பு மிரட்டல் இதெல்லாம் இருக்குது பாருங்கள் அதில் கூட ஆக்சுவலாக சொல்லப்போனால் என்னுடைய ஒய்ஃபு என்னுடைய அம்மா என்னுடைய த பாட்டி அவங்களுடைய அம்மா இப்படி என்னுடைய பரம்பரையில் இருந்த பெண்களை பற்றி தான் எல்லாம் பேசுனாங்க நிறைய ஆமாம் எல்லாருமே என்னுடைய பரம்பரையை சேர்ந்த பெண்கள் எல்லாருமே ப்ராஸ்டிடியூட் அப்படின்னு போட்டாங்க ஆமாம் இப்போ என்னைய இப்போ என்னுடைய ஒழுக்கத்தையோ இப்போ என்னுடைய எதையோ ஒன்றும் யாரும் கேள்வியே கேட்கல என் பரம்பரையில் இருந்த பெண்களை பற்றி தான் பேசுனாங்க so he says that uh, yes it was entirely because uh, she is a woman the thing about the community is only secondary and he also says that when he faced backlash from the community what happened is that they started attacking the women in his family they said things like uh, about his mother his wife his grandmother his great grandmother in fact an entire you know like ancestry of people started attacking the women referred to them as prostitutes at, at uh, in certain spaces and not once did they actually attack murugan's character the character of the men in his family adanal mukkiyana kobam or community adavad the jaadi ingra vishayame kuda adha kaapathi vekkiradhu andha poruppu undu pengitta irukku nu dhan nenikiraanga kudumba kudumba undu kudumbam ingra andha institution undu adha kaapathi vekkakoodiya poruppu pengitta dhan இன்றைக்கி கூட ஒரு இதில் இந்த ஹானர் கில்லிங் அது சம்மந்தமாக நிறைய பேச்சு வருது பாருங்கள் அதில் கூட பெண்கள் அதில் ஆவேசமாக நிறைய பேர் ஈடுபடுறாங்க முக்கியமான காரணம் என்ன அப்படின்னு சொன்னால் அது அவங்க டியூட்டின்னு வந்து அவங்களுக்கு கற்பிக்கப்பட்டிருக்கு அதனால் அது எங்கே இப்போ தன்னுடைய கடமையிலிருந்து வலுவிட்டோம் தன் மேலே பிரச்சனை வந்துடுமோ அப்படின்னு தான் வந்து பெண்கள் ரியாக்ட் பண்ணுறாங்க அதனால் இது எல்லாமே இந்த கௌரவம் எல்லாத்தையுமே காப்பாற்றி வச்சு வைக்க வேண்டியது பெண் அப்படிங்கிற ஒரு கான்செப்ட் இருக்குது அதனால் இந்த நாவலை பொறுத்த வரைக்கும் ஜாதிங்கிறது ரெண்டாவது விஷயமாக தான் இருந்தது இந்த பெண் தான் பொண்ணாவுடைய கேரக்டரு அது வந்து எவ்வளவு அது த தப்பாக நடந்துக்கிட்டாங்க இப்படி தப்பாக எழுதிட்டாரு அப்படிங்கிறது தான் பிரச்சனையாக இருந்தது ஜாதி ரெண்டாவது இடத்துல தான் இருந்தது so the to answer your question community is very much a part of it but the, you cannot remove gender from that question because uh, it seems to him that uh, the honor of a community seems to lie in the hands of a woman and a woman can i mean the whatever the male does he cannot destroy the honor of the community but even the smallest so called transgression of a woman is seen as a way of destroying the honor or the dignity of a community and therefore you cannot take gender out of the question even if you are specifically speaking about community Uh, let's go to that lady in the back over there who's standing with her hand up am i audible yeah my question is for murugan sir i am a huge fan and uh, sir i want to ask you that you have uh, you have commented on the regional literature the term that you say that you don't like the term regional literature to be called about for Uh, some sort of literature of any state or any nation uh, because it limits the reach of the literature and the books included in it so i want to ask that uh, the regional literature the inverted comma li- regional literature the uh, opportunities for regional literature are very limited like the adaptations and uh, everything happening out in their uh, uh, web series and the movies they are already just the um, novels which are in lead start so what do you think uh, what should be done about the regional literature to get it in mainstream in the regional literature la vaaka use panna koda adu solli irukinga la munadi adha patti kekkranga eppadi avangalukku more opportunity kudukka mudiyum illa more opportunity kudukkaradhu and the conscious varanum nu da na nenikiren appo idu அப்போ இந்தியாவில் இருக்கக்கூடிய ஒவ்வொரு லாங்குவேஜ்லேயும் இந்தியன் லாங்குவேஜஸ்ன்னு தான் நான் சொல்லணும்னு நான் நினைக்கிறேன் இப்போ தமிழையோ மலையாளத்தையோ அல்லது பெங்காலியையோ வந்து ரீஜனல் லாங்குவேஜ்ன்னு சொல்கிறதுல எனக்கு உடன்பாடு இல்லை அப்படின்னு நான் சொல்லியிருக்கேன் இது எல்லாத்தையுமே இந்தியன் லாங்குவேஜஸ் அப்படின்னு தான் சொல்லணும் இப்போ தமிழை சொன்னால் அது ஒரு ஒன் ஆஃப் த இந்தியன் லாங்குவேஜ்னு சொல்கிறதுல எனக்கு எந்த ஆட்சேபனையும் இல்லை அதுபோல் தான் தமிழ் லிட்ரேச்சரை வந்து ரீஜனல் லிட்ரேச்சர்னு சொல்கிறதுல எனக்கு உடன்பாடு இல்லை அப்படின்னா இந்தியன் லிட்ரேச்சருங்கிறது எது இங்கிலீஷில் எழுதுகிறது தான் இந்தியன் லிட்ரேச்சரா அப்படிங்கிற ஒரு கேள்வி வருது அதனால் நீங்கள் வந்து நாம் கான்சியஸாக அதை பயன்படுத்த வேண்டிய அவசியம் இருக்குதுன்னு நினைக்கிறேன் இப்போ நீங்கள் சொல்கிற மாதிரி இந்தியன் லாங்குவேஜஸில் எழுதக்கூடிய எழுத்துக்களுக்கு வந்து ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி கொடுக்கறதில்ல அதுதான் மையத்தில் இருக்கணும் அப்படின்னு நான் நினைக்கிறேன் நீங்கள் அதுக்கு காரணம் இந்தியன் லாங்குவேஜஸ்க்குள்ளேயே ட்ரான்ஸ்லேஷன் வரணும் 
இப்போ என்னுடைய புத்தகத்தை வந்து இங்கிலீஷில் ட்ரான்ஸ்லேட் பண்ணால் தான் எனக்கு சந்தோஷம்னு இல்லை என்னுடைய புத்தகம் பெங்காலியில் வந்துச்சு எனக்கு பெரிய அதை விட இங்கிலீஷில் வர்றதை விட நான் பெரிய சந்தோஷப்படுவேன் அதான் So uh, he says that uh, by using words like regional and vernacular we are seeing that it is that it is not part of indian literature and that it is only english that is somehow part of the mainstream indian literature so in fact he says my work has been translated into english but were it translated into other indian languages like bengali it would make him even happier uh, he also says that it is not about giving opportunity because this literature already exists this is i mean this is very much part of our consciousness so it is not an it is not about saying oh let's give opportunity to other languages these languages are part of our lives and like they already exist uh there's the lady standing over there maybe uh am i audible yeah hi i have two questions first um because you were speaking about how the publisher did continue to publish your book that in light of me to event i wanted to ask what you think about the whole cancel culture where you know is it typical should the artist and the art be separated C- question do you think you should be more aware of what you're publishing or should you just straight out cancel everything that a person who has been accused i just wanted to know your thoughts on that and secondly my second question is just like how you have in movies even in your books when you depict characters that have toxic masculinity characteristics how do you ensure that that does, doesn't translate into something that becomes a heroism or a favorite character that people you know tend to love Oh, cancel. Um, yeah, cancel them. <laughs> I mean, you know, you can't nuance everything. Sometimes broad strokes are required, right? Cancel them. Let them go back and learn what they've done. Let them come out and apologize. They can be uncancelled. Instead of which they're filing court cases. Whoa. That's not acceptable. Yeah, and who wants to take a second question? Savindra, you can start. How do you ensure your toxic, male toxic people don't become heroes in your books right now? readers don't see them as heroes i think i have in my work presented male t- uh, you know this toxic masculinity and men who are indulging in it as you know uh, main characters not exactly heroes but main characters <sighs> i think this depends upon the writer i think this de- uh, this certainly depends upon the writer but as a writer i will ensure that i will be responsible i think that's a great note to end on we've just run out of time i'm sure you have more questions but please find the writers outside uh let's pledge to read more women yes yeah okay thank you thank you very much to all our panelists and a reminder that roshan arunava and hansta will be signing books in the book signing tent so head out towards mughal tent that's where our book signing area is thank you